Hi guys, welcome to the Investigating Populations. So in terms of the specification, we will be looking at the quadrat and we will be looking at the mark release recapture method. So what specification is expecting from you is to be able to estimate the size of population using those two methods. So just a quick recap on the quadrats. So you could use quadrats to investigate non-motile organisms. So you could use a frame quadrat for that. Or you could also use them to investigate slow moving organisms using a point quadrant. So systematic uh, sampling along the bell transect, we could use two methods here. So we could use a line transect that could be used in, uh, used in the way which, it, uh, which could look like a string or a tape and is stretched across the ground and any organism that will pass the line uh, will be recorded. So the idea of this is to help out uh, and find out the distribution across an area along a line of succession. So any questions about the succession, you could use a line transect. Then we've got the bell transect, so it's a strip mark using a second parallel line and species within that belt and between the lines are then recorded. So how is it useful? It's useful to work out the species frequency, so how often they appear and also the percentage cover along the transect. We also got interrupted by a transect and they are to cover a larger distance um, uh, between their quadrants and they can be placed at the intervals along the line. So uh, measuring the, uh, the ab uh, abundance, uh, it's done in a few ways. So you could look at the frequency, what we've mentioned, uh, mentioned before. So it's a likelihood of the specific species occurring in that quadrant. So how often they are in there. So it gives you a quick idea of species present and general distribution within an area, but does not provide the density or distribution of species. Then you can use also the percentage cover, and this is then to estimate the area within the quadrant. So it's useful where species uh, is part, uh, specifically uh, abundant, and data then can be collected rapidly, but it occurs in overlapping layers. And obviously, to make sure that you can obtain reliable results, the sample size has to be large because it's going to be then more representative. So many quadrants will be used and the mean will be collected. So uh, factors to consider using the quadrants, there could be questions on that. So it has to be the size of the quadrant. So the larger species need large quadrants and number of species. So the larger the number of species, the more reliable the results will be. The position of the quadrant. So statistically significant results are obtained by a random sampling. Okay, so we're going to use the method to generate the random coordinates, for example, the calculator or the random generator or the table. So here are a few questions to so outline the method the ecologists could have used to determine the plant species richness at one site. Species richness, so it's how many different species it's present. So for this, we would use the method of selecting sampling sites at random. So we would use the quadrants and you would identify the plant species. So coming back to the method of selecting uh, sampling sites at random, you could use the calculator, you could uh, look, uh, look at the uh, random uh, generator, any stuff like that. And then obviously you're going to put your quadrants at those locations. Another question here, we've got to describe how you would investigate the effect of an invasion of by a non-native species of plant over many years on the abundance of a native species of plant in a community. So here are keyword community, so there are all of the populations. So what we need to do, obviously set the grid, uh, uh, grid system with the coordinates and place a large number, so that's important here, of quadrants, okay, at random. And we will then count the number 
or we could estimate the percentage cover of native plants in those quadrants and repeat that over many years, so at the same time each year, right? Another question we've got here, when you've got the graph that shows you the succession, we've mentioned that the, um, the, uh, the random sampling is good for the succession as well, and uh, the scientists measure the percentage cover of different species of plant on some genes of different ages. And some of the results scientists obtain are shown in that figure 5, which you can see here, which is the mean percentage cover of those species against the time. And describe how would you determine the mean percentage cover. So mean percentage cover is our keyword, but the idea of the random sampling stays the same. So method of random sampling so generation of those uh, random coordinates here it's important using a calculator for example a table so a large number of quarters same answer and here the main key word was the percentage oops was the percentage cover so if they're asking about the mean that's a keyword here percentage cover need to include that in your answer so to divide the total percentage by the number of quadrants, that's how we can work out the mean percentage cover. Another question we've got here, the graph, that, and again, you need to describe how would you investigate the effect of the invasion of a non-native species on the community. Same question like before, but with the graph. Same, hopefully you remember, so set the grid with coordinates, large number of quadrants, count number of percentage cover of native species and repeat the same year okay at the same time for many years right and then another method it's a mark release recapture so it's to uh, that is a method that you're going to use to investigate abundance of more multi species so the idea is here it's to capture the sample using the uh, appropriate uh, technique and count so don't forget here you need to count them going to mark them in the way which is harmless going to release them back to their habitats and leave a time and after this specific time you're going to then count how many uh, uh, how many individuals of the second sample that you're going to collect will be marked and there is the equation you're going to use so a total number of individuals in the first sample multiplied by the total number of individuals in the second sample divided by the number of marked individuals recaptured so always for giving this equation you are getting a mark so make sure you will remember that so uh, the assumptions with the mark release recapture is the fact let's start from the easy one that the mark or labor doesn't uh, uh, it's not lost and it's not ripped off, okay? Uh, meant to be all here. So, obviously, because you want to recapture them in the second sample and count, so you can't lose the labels. A marking, it's uh, not toxic, it's not going um, to harm organisms. There will be few deaths, okay, within the populations. There will be no immigration or emigration and then more advanced stuff. So the mark individuals released from the first sample distributes themselves evenly and they have the time to do so. And then the proportion of mark to unmarked individuals in the second sample is the same as the proportion of mark to unmarked individuals in the population as a whole. So make sure you know the assumptions and let's have a look at the question. So describe how the mark release recapture method could be used to determine the population of those species at the start of the investigation. So keywords that you need to do uh, include so capture, mark and release. All those three words to get a mark. Okay. Leave the time what we've said to obviously go back to their own habitats before you sample for the second time. And as I've said, giving equation you're always getting. A mark okay uh, another one but for four markers so again describe the method here where the marks are coming from what they've included same stuff so uh, uh, capture okay mark release always one mark the um, equation one mark leaving the time it's another mark 
But what they've given extra mark here for extended the first mark 